Good afternoon. Today we are going to take our fourth part of our first chapter, Sensations and the Responses. You all know that uh, we have studied about the structure of the brain and structure of the brain, just parts that we have told in the last class. Uh, but which are the parts uh, of the brain? And there are five parts for a brain, is it? Which are the cerebra, cerebellum, thalamus, hypothalamus, then medulla oblongata. These are the five parts of a brain. Uh, last class we have stopped with uh, this, uh, just uh, told about the five parts of the brain and we have stopped the class. Today we are going to study about the uh, in detail about the uh, functions of uh, each part uh, and uh, what cerebrum uh, has, uh, what is the function of the cerebrum, what is the function of the cerebellum, like that uh, we are going to see. Is it clear for you? So uh, now we can look about the structure of the brain and the parts, uh, each function, what, uh, what is the function of the each part, uh, now we can see. Okay. Yes, here you can see, uh, you can see the structure of the brain in this and uh, first part is the cerebrum. Cerebrum, you can see that the largest part of the brain is called as the cerebrum. And so, uh, cerebrum is the among the five parts of the brain. Cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. Then, numerous fissures and folds are seen. You can see in the picture itself. It's not a plain surface. You can see numerous fissures and folding. Uh, folds are seen in the cerebrum. Then, uh, next, third point is the gray colored outer part of the cerebrum is called cortex and the white colored inner part is called medulla. You have studied in the last year, uh, is it a structure of a kidney, you have studied about the cortex and the medulla. Cortex means the outer part and the medulla means the inner part. We have already studied that. And uh, you have in this year, uh, in the last class, we have studied about the gray matter and white matter. Gray matter means what? The gray colored outer part means uh, in the cortex, what is present, uh, non myelinated neurons are present in abundance. That's why it's gray in color. And the white matter inner part, the, the what is present, uh, myelinated neurons are present in the inner part. That's why it's white in color. And the inner part is called as the medulla. And what is the function of cerebrum? Next day about the function of the cerebrum. It's the center of thought. So uh, that, uh, what we are thinking or uh, what actions we are doing, all that are occurring in the cerebrum. It's the center of thought, intelligence, memory, and imagination. So all these things are happening in the uh, largest part of the brain that is cerebrum. Then evoke sensations. Next point is evoke sensations. Then uh, and last point coming under cerebrum is controls voluntary movements. What do you mean by voluntary and the involuntary movements? That also you have studied in the last year. What is voluntary movements? So that we are doing according to our wish. And involuntary means that we are doing, are not doing according to our wish, is it? So uh, voluntary, it controls our voluntary movements. So what all things we are doing according to our wish is controlled by the uh, cerebrum. Is it clear for you? Then next part is the cerebellum. Cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain and it is seen behind the cerebrum as two flaps. Then uh, fissures and grooves are present. There are also fissures and grooves are present in the cerebellum also. You can see in the picture, it's, it's also a not plain surface. You can see so many fissures and grooves on the, uh, present on the cerebellum also. And next point, the fourth point in cerebellum is the function of the cerebellum. Coordinates muscular activities and maintains equilibrium of the body. So the function of the cerebellum is it coordinates the activities of our muscles and helps in body balancing. Is it clear for you? Then 
Next part is the medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata, uh, you can see from its shape itself, it's a rod shaped. Uh, so the rod shaped medulla oblongata is seen uh, below the cerebrum. Uh, you can see the position of the medulla oblongata in the picture. That is, it's below the cerebrum and uh, near to the cerebellum. And what is its function? Controls involuntary actions like uh, heartbeat, breathing etc we all know that involuntary activities means that we it's out of our control we can't control the involuntary activities so can we control our heartbeat no never we can we control our breathing no or everything is automatically happening in our body is it so it's the involuntary such involuntary activities are under the control of the medulla oblongata is it clear for you the next part the fourth part is the thalamus Thalamus is situated below the cerebrum and act as a relay station of impulses to and from the cerebrum. So it, uh, uh, it will control the messages to get inside the cerebrum and those messages that is coming out from the cerebrum to outside. Then analyzes uh, impulses from various parts of the body and send the important ones to cerebrum. So, so many messages will be coming from different parts of our body to the cerebrum. So our thalamus will identify identify those messages and which one is the important one that will be sent to the uh, cerebrum by our thalamus. The next part is the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus you can see in the picture it is situated below the thalamus just below the thalamus and what's its function it plays a major role in maintenance of homeostasis. Homeostasis means maintenance of our internal body temperature. Is it clear for you? So once more, uh, just a glance, I will tell about the uh, five parts and its function. First one is the cerebrum, the largest part of the brain. Then numerous fissures and folds are seen. Then the gray colored uh, outer part of the cerebrum is called cortex. And the white colored inner part is called medulla. And it is the center of thought intelligence, memory, and imagination, then evoke sensations, controls, voluntary movements. Then comes the cerebellum, the second largest part of the brain, then seen behind the cerebrum as two flaps. Then fissures and grooves are present, coordinates muscular activities, and maintains equilibrium of the body. Then comes the medulla oblongata. It's a rod-shaped medulla oblongata. It's seen behind, below the cerebrum, located near the cerebellum. Then what's the second point? The medulla oblongata controls involuntary actions like heartbeat, breathing, etc. Then comes the thalamus. It is situated below the cerebrum, acts as a relay station of impulses to and from the cerebrum analyzes impulses from various parts of the body and send the important ones to the cerebrum. Then last, hypothalamus, situated just below the thalamus, plays a major role in the maintenance of homeostasis. So these are the parts. These are the parts of the brain. Is it clear for you? Then, So these are the parts of the five parts of the brain and the uh, functions of each part. Mm -hmm. So I think it's clear for you. So when a question comes, which part of the brain eh, helps in body balancing? If a question comes like that, you have to write the answer. Cerebellum helps in the body balancing. Then which part, which is the last part of the brain? It's the cerebrum. Like this, the questions will become asked. Is it clear for you? Then, if a uh, uh, question comes, which part of the brain uh, is the uh, center of thought, imagination, uh, memory, uh, uh, like this, uh, intelligence, like this, if asked, uh, you have to answer, it's the cerebrum. And uh, which part of the brain helps in maintaining the homeostasis, which is that it's the hypothalamus. Is it clear for you? 
What do you mean by homeostasis? You have studied in the last year also about homeostasis. Homeostasis means maintaining the internal body temperature and internal body balancing, uh, internal uh, activities. Or every, uh, what is, what all things are happening inside our body is maintained or balanced. Uh, that process, uh, uh, the internal body temperature and all other things are balanced. That process is called as the homeostasis. Okay. The metabolism, everything uh, is balanced, uh, going in a ba balanced manner. All these things together comes under the maintenance of the homeostasis. So we have covered about our structure of uh, brain, is it? Uh, we have studied about the five parts of the brain. We have studied about each function of each part of the brain, is it? Then we have to study about the next uh, uh, spinal cord. Spinal cord, while, while we are telling about the spinal cord, before that I have to tell you, our nervous system, we have uh, studied in our pre previous class, our nervous system is divided into two, that is uh, central nervous system and uh, peripheral nervous system. Under the central nervous system, as its name indicates, the parts that is coming in the center of our body, that is the uh, brain and the uh, spinal cord. Is it? Brain we have already covered now. Next we are going to study about the spinal cord. Before showing the cross-section of spinal cord, I will give you an introduction about spinal cord. This is clear for you. So, spinal cord, uh, you know that our brain is protected inside a hard skull. Is it? Like that, our spinal cord is protected inside a vertebral cord. Is it clear for you? Our brain is protected inside the heart skull. Like that, spinal cord is protected inside the vertebral cord. And spinal cord is also covered by the three-layered membrane called as meninges. Is it clear for you? And the center of the spinal cord uh, is filled with the central canal, uh, the area. The center of the spinal cord is known as the central canal. And it is filled with the cerebrospinal fluid.
is called as the cerebral reflex. Now, next step. situation uh, suddenly uh, we will react towards that uh, that reactions are controlled by the sympathetic so emergency situation but all uh, changes are happening in our different parts of our body it is controlled by the sympathetic system okay so uh, if you are uh, while walking if you are suddenly seeing a snake whatever reactions will be happening in your body will be controlled by the sympathetic system so that is uh, the pupil in the eye dilates. Dilates means expand. The production of saliva decreases. Trachea expands. Heart beat increases. Gastric activities slow down. Then glycogen is converted into glucose. That is happening in the liver. Then uh, in the uh, intestine, peristalsis in the intestine slows down. Peristalsis means uh, muscular movement, eh? uh, contraction and relaxation of the muscles. Thus, muscular movement helps in the movement of food. That is known as the peristalsis. Then, production of hormone increases, urinary bladder regains its normal state. All these activities are happening to the different parts of our body when we are in an excited state. Eh? When we are in an excited state, all these things are happening. When our body comes to the normal state, uh, what all things are happening to our parts, different parts of our body is controlled by the parasympathetic nervous system. That is, the pupil in the eye contracts, production of saliva increases, then trachea contracts, uh, heartbeat becomes normal, gastric activities become normal, glucose is converted into glycogen, peristalsis in the intestine becomes normal, urinary bladder contracts. These are the changes that is happening to the, in the parasympathetic nervous system. And then uh, production of hormones decreases. All these are the changes happening uh, during uh, with the help of parasympathetic system when our body becomes uh, in a normal state. Is it clear for you? So, these are the functions
given to our nervous system. Otherwise, and if a uh, if a small uh, uh, mistake or uh, if any thing happen to our nervous system, it will result in a uh, dangerous diseases to our nervous system and to our body. So that some of the diseases, there are three diseases affecting our nervous system is uh, given. Uh, one, first one is Alzheimer's. Now you may be heard in the film Tanmatra about the disease Alzheimer's. What is the cause of this disease you can see? That is accumulation of an insoluble protein in the neural tissues of the brain. You know, neurons get destroyed. That means a protein get accumulated in the neural tissues of the brain. And then the neurons get destroyed. When the neurons get destroyed, what will happen? The brain will not be able to get the messages from the different parts of the body. And the brain can't give response to the messages also. So, that, uh, in that condition, we will lose our memory. Right? So, the symptoms of this disease is loss of memory, inability to recognize friends and relatives, inability to do routine work. So, what all things we are doing in our daily life that we can't do eh? and, uh, in, in the case of an Alzheimer patient. It's clear for you, that is Alzheimer. Second one is Parkinson's. Destruction of specialized ganglions in the brain. Ganglions means a group of neurons. So the neurons get destroyed. Production of dopamine, a neurotransmitter in the brain get produced. When dopamine is not produced, uh, what will happen? Uh, the transmission of impulses also will be uh, lost. Then symptoms is loss of body balance, irregular movement of muscles, shivering of the body, profuse salivation. Profuse salivation means uncontrolled salivation will be coming out of the mouth. Next is the epilepsy. Epilepsy, commonly we call it as the fix. Huh? You will be heard about that, fix. What will happen? Continuous and the cause of that is continuous and irregular flow of electric charges in the brain. We all know that our uh, but impulses are transmitted through the neurons and the form of electric impulses. So it, this, it is in an irregular manner it is flowing towards the brain. So the, at that time the working of the brain will be uh, collapse. So, uh, uh, the continuous and irregular flow of electric charges in the brain is the cause of epilepsy. Next, the symptoms of the epilepsy is due to continuous and muscular, continuous muscular contraction, uh, uh, epilepsy is uh, one of the symptoms of epilepsy is the, uh, the continuous muscular contraction. Uh, because the reason for that is continuous and irregular flow of electric charges to the brain. Then, Protein discharge from the mouth and the saliva will be con coming out from the mouth in an uncontrolled manner. Then, plunging of the teeth, uh, the following which the patient falls uh, unconscious and the patient will fall as the unconscious. So, uh, we are the